What is up guys? Fahir here from awesometoots.com. In the previous video we added all of our enemies or the remaining enemies and we said that we're gonna code the bee and the ninja separately and we will start with the bee. So if we go inside of our scripts folder we have enemy scripts. Here we are gonna add our bee scripts. So I'm gonna create a folder B scripts because we have one for the squirrels. You can see here squirrel. I'm the squirrel whisperer, and here I am gonna name this one B script. So right click, create a new script, name it B script. Before I open it, I'm gonna go and attach it on the B itself. So remove the enemy move script. We don't need it. We are gonna attach the B script on the B itself. Simply by clicking Add Component and, well, filtering here for the B script. And if you want to remove a component that is attached on a game object, you have this gear icon on it where you can click on Remove Component. Double click on the B script and voila, here it is. So I'm gonna say here Class and I am gonna tag the class at the bottom and hold Enter to give a little bit of space. Let me just see here, what did I click? It's not important anyways. Moving forward. As always, we need a couple of variables. So we need a public float, move, speed, which by default I'm gonna say 3.5F. Now what is the behavior that we actually want from our B? Well, if I go here in the B prefabs, enemy prefabs B, here it is. What I want from the B is the following. I want the B to go here until its Y position is zero. So until Y position is zero, it will stop here and it will try to attack the player something like this or like this or like this. It's not important, but it will try to attack the player. So for that, we need a couple of variables. We need a private boolean. So private bool attack start it. We also need a private bool move and attack. We also need a private bool, private bool attack right. This is gonna determine if we are attacking from the right side or the left side. So are we attacking to the right or are we attacking to the left side? We also need a private float which is gonna be our attack speed by default. I'm gonna set it to be equal to six. Now in the start function when we first spawn the B we want to determine, do we attack to the right or do we attack to the left? And we're going to determine that by using transform position X. If it's greater than zero, that means we are on the left side or actually we are on the right side and we will attack to the left because notice here, I'm going to take the player as an example. So I have the player, if I set his X to be zero, he's in the middle. If the X is at two, he is to the right side because in Unity, X axis goes positive. So it's something like this. So I'm gonna see here, highlight tool. We have the coordinate system and this is X and this is Y for those of you who don't know. So X axis going in this direction, it's the positive direction. Going in this direction, it's the negative direction. For the Y axis going up, that's the positive side and going down, that's the negative side. And here, right here where the X is, that is zero. So I'm testing here if the transform position X is greater than zero, what does this tell you? So if it's zero, it's right in the middle. If it's greater than zero, that means we are on the right side. So we are in the positive side. So when the B attacks, it's gonna attack to the left side and not in the right side. If the transform position X is not greater than zero, that means we need to attack to the right side. So here we're gonna say attack. So attack right is equal to false because we're attacking to the left side. Else, if the transform position X is greater than or actually lower than zero, then attack right is gonna be equal to true because I already explained if it's lower than zero, that means we are in the left side, which is the negative side. So now below the update function, we're gonna create void B attack function. So B attack and we're gonna call this one inside of the update function. This is where the magic happens. This is where we are gonna attack. So what we are gonna do here, we're gonna move the B downwards until its position is 
greater than zero. So we're going to say as long as or if our transform position y is greater than zero, which means the B is still not in the middle of the screen. And again, I'm going to take the highlight tool and demonstrate that. So again, we have the X and the Y. So here we have Y and here we have X. I said upwards on the Y is the positive side. So plus here, right here where the X is, this is zero. So if the B is here, that means the transform position Y is greater than zero because you see zero is here and our position is here. That means we are greater. So position Y is greater than zero. And as long as the transform position Y from the B is greater than zero, we are going to move the B downward. So when the B hits zero position or below zero somewhere around here, as long as the Y position is not greater than zero anymore, we will not move the B. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say vector three temp is equal to transform that position temp dot y minus equals move speed multiplied with time, delta time and transform position is equal to temp again. And we can test it out if we go back here, since we have attached the script on the B, if I simply run the game, let us wait for the B to be spawned. So here we have the player flag has been spawned. Next one is ninja enemy, ninja enemy again. Come on, please spawn the B. Spawn the B. We have the tree clone. Come on. Here it is. So the B has been spawned. And notice now the B is going to go down until it reaches. Here is the B. Bam. It reached zero. You see it reached zero for the Y and it's not moving anymore because its position now is not greater than zero. So this is as long as the transform position Y is greater than zero. Else, if it's not greater than zero anymore, which means we reach the center of the screen like this, as you can see. What we want to do now? Well, this is where the magic happens. Here we're going to check if the attack is not started. So attack started. Notice the exclamation mark. And I have talked about this numerous of times in my tutorials. The exclamation mark makes what's after it opposite. So essentially when you see an exclamation mark, you will think of it like this. You're testing if something did not happen. Because if you test it like this, you are testing if attack started, then do something. But with an exclamation mark, you're testing if the attack did not start. Think of it like that. Why? Well, because here we have just declared attack started. By default, if I don't write is equal to true, the default value of a Boolean is false. So if you just declare a Boolean like this, this attack right here has false for its value. So you don't need to type here is equal to false. You can do it, but you don't need to because the default value is false. Now, because of that, if the attack is not started, this exclamation mark, if this is false, exclamation mark will make it the opposite. What's opposite the false? True and vice versa. So if the attack did not start, we're going to see here attack started, not attack speed, attack started is now equal to true so that this if statement does not get executed again. So attack now is started and I went to the bottom of the script. So now attack is started. So attack is true because now when we get to this if statement, exclamation mark will make it the opposite. If the value is true, what's opposite of true? False. You got that right, my brother. So here, since the attack is started, we're going to call start coroutine because we're going to create a coroutine that is going to be called attack player. This is the name of the coroutine, which we still did not create. So it's giving us a red warning. And what we want to do here? Well, we want to create an I enumerator like this, and we're going to name it attack player. So what we want to do inside of this attack player function? Well, we want to yield return new wait for seconds. So we want to wait for seconds and we're going to wait 1.5 of a second when the B gets to the middle of the screen. So you know that graph that I have well drawn for some reason. I don't have my highlight tool here. So when the middle of the screen is here, let's say our B is here. When that happens, we will trigger this right here and we will wait 1.5 seconds and then we will start charging at the player. And in order to start charging at the player, what we need to do, we need to say here, transform that rotation because we just want to rotate our 
B a little bit, and we're gonna make it equal to quaternion, Euler, and here we're gonna say new vector three, and we're gonna say zero for the X, zero for the Y, and for the Z, we're gonna say random range from zero F to negative 45 F in degrees, and we need to close one more parenthesis, and bam, we are done. So this is just gonna rotate our B a little bit, and let me show you what I mean. So for example, if I take the player here, and if I rotate him on the Z axis, you see he's gonna be rotated something like this. Well, we wanna rotate the B, for example, like this and make it charge at the player, just so that it looks like, you know, when falcons go down to chase the bird or whatever, that effect we wanna achieve. So here, we're also gonna say move and attack is equal to true. And we want to invoke a function that is called DAC Activate, and we are gonna invoke it in five seconds. What is this deactivate function? Well, this is a function that we are gonna create here, void deactivate, which is simply gonna call the game object set active to false. So first we are gonna attack. We are gonna allow the bee to attack after 1.5 seconds, and when the bee attacks, it's gonna go outside of the screen. We are not gonna see it anymore. It's not gonna be visible. It's not gonna go downwards. We need to deactivate it somehow because you know what I said about those game objects? When we don't need them, we can simply deactivate them or otherwise they will take up memory in our game, but we don't have a use for them because, well, we are not using them. And then we will invoke and invoke, if I hover over, let me see if there is an explanation. Yes, here it is. Invokes the method, method name in time seconds. This is the method name in a string. So you see quotes, this is a string. And this is a method name, which is this one right here. So this one right here, method or function, this is that, this right here. It will invoke it in five seconds. So this is like a timer before deactivate is called. Now, what about this move and attack? Well, this one is gonna be called right here inside of the else statement, right outside of this if statement. So, or actually, excuse me, not here, but we are gonna call it outside of the if else statement. So let me just close this here, outside of the if else statement, because well, we don't need it to be inside of the else statement. Right here, we're gonna say if move and attack. So if we can move and we can attack, what we wanna do if, so if we are not attacking right, which means we are attacking left, we're gonna call transform position and we're gonna say minus E equals to vector three dot right. And we're gonna multiply that with the attack speed and multiply that with time dot delta time. Why vector three right? Well, because if you hover over it, that is writing shorthand for, as you can see here, vector three one zero zero. This denotes the right side. As I said, positive side on the x-axis is to the right, negative is to the left. So if we are attacking, you see here, we are not attacking right actually. So that means that we need to subtract from our, well, position using here right. Else, you see here, else, we're gonna say transform that position plus equals to vector three right multiplied with the attack speed, not attack right, attack speed, multiplied with time dot delta time, as you can see right here. So if we are not attacking to the right, that means we are attacking to the left side. So we are subtracting from our position. Why subtracting? Let me go here. Again, drawing this, this is the positive, this is the, well, this right here is the negative, this right here is the positive, and this is the x-axis. If we are not attacking to the right, that means we are attacking to the left, which means we are going to the negative. This right here is negative, this is the negative, which means we need to subtract from our position to go to the negative side. Else, if we are attacking right, which is, well, this one right here, else, we need to go to the positive. So here is positive like this. So we are going to the positive, which means we need to add to our button. This is, or actually to our position, not to our button, because as I already explained, the positive side is the right side. 
So let's test it out and see if it actually works because we have everything attached on the B. If I hit the play button, let's wait for the B to be spawned. When we spawn the B and right away we see the B. Now please pay attention. Pay attention now when the B comes down. Here it is. Notice now the B is here. Notice now it's going to start attacking. Bam! You see the B went to attack the player. Let me see again if we have another B. Come on, where you are, B, 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 come on, B. Nope, we are spawning ninjas and flags, and again, we are spawning flags and ninjas, and come on, man, spawn the bees so that I don't need to go and put all bees. Here it is, one more bee. Notice now, please take a look at, pay attention when the bee comes out. Here it is, notice it's gonna stop here, and bam, it's gonna start attacking. You see, did you see the bee went to attack the player? Because it reached the middle of the screen, so the else statement gets invoked, if we did not attack, we are going to say attack started. Start the coroutine, which will wait 1.5 of a second. It will rotate the B and it will allow it to move and attack. What happens when we are allowed to move and attack? We will test on which side we are attacking. If it's the left side, we will go to the left side. If it's the right side, we will start attacking to the right side as we just saw. Fahir here from AwesomeTudes.com. I will catch you guys in the next video.